a Patreon supporter of this channel asked me to make a film about how the Navy communicate with their submarines. Interesting stuff. The obvious solution is for a submarine to surface, raise an antenna above sea level, then use VHF radio transmissions. However, a submarine is most vulnerable when on the surface. During the Cold War, nuclear-powered submarines were developed that could stay submerged for months. To communicate with hidden submarines, a new radio system that can reach the bottom of the ocean was needed. The military came up with the idea of a very low frequency radio system. VLF radio waves can diffract around large obstacles and so are not blocked by mountain ranges or the horizon. They propagate as ground waves following the curvature of the Earth. The Earth is surrounded by a conductive layer of electrons and ions in the upper atmosphere. At the bottom of the ionosphere is a layer that reflects VLF radio waves. The VLF waves travel in a zigzag pattern around the Earth, reflected alternately by the Earth and the lower ionosphere. Normal radio signals are returned to Earth from the upper layers in the ionosphere and so propagate less distance. VLF radio waves can penetrate seawater to a depth of approximately 20 meters. A submarine moving at a shallow depth can pick up these frequencies. A vessel more deeply submerged can still use this frequency if it uses a float equipped with an antenna on a long cable. It can raise it to a few meters below the surface with the hope the antenna will remain undetected by enemy sonar or radar. Due to the very low frequency, a VLF broadcast antenna station needs to be quite large. In fact, broadcasting sites usually cover a few square miles. This, of course, prevents such transmitting antennas being installed on a submarine. So a ground-to-submarine VLF broadcast is always a one-way broadcast. And because of the VLF's narrow bandwidth, these radio signals cannot carry voice and can only transmit text messages. VLF data transmission rates are about a sentence every two seconds a total of about 450 words per minute. More recently, the Navy researched ELF, extremely low frequencies. They found that electromagnetic waves in the ELF frequency range can penetrate seawater to a depth of hundreds of meters, allowing signals to be sent to submarines at their safer operating depths. Building an ELF transmitter is a formidable challenge as they have to work at incredibly long wavelengths. The US Navy system, Seafarer, operates at 76 hertz. The size of the signal wave is more than a quarter of the Earth's diameter. Obviously, an antenna that tall cannot be reasonably constructed. Instead, one has to find an area with very low ground conductivity, bury two large electrodes in the ground at different sites, and then feed lines to them from a station in the middle. 
in the form of wire on poles. There is an ELF station just like this in northern Wisconsin, stretching out from Wisconsin all the way to Upper Michigan. The ground here is hard granite, ideal for this type of transmitter. But ELF antennas are very inefficient. To drive them, you need a large power supply. The high-powered land-based ELF transmitters send signals that can be received thousands of miles away. They have a power anywhere from 20 kilowatts to 2 megawatts. The military would only need one of these stations to cover the Earth. But there are low frequency antennas in Hawaii. Here is the access walkway to the VLF submarine navigation system antenna above Kaneohe. People climb up the so-called stairway to heaven and often get stuck. There's an ELF antenna at Daventry in the UK, one in India and Australia at a base called Harold Holt Radio Station. For years, the antenna here was the highest structure in the Southern Hemisphere. Plus there's more, such as this secret one in the Antarctic. The Antarctic has an agreement not to be used for military purposes, but this radio station seems to have fallen through the net. For years, people near the transmitters have had concerns about these radio stations. If you look up the health and safety information on very low frequency radio waves, it confirms you should stay a long way from high power transmitters. Remember, 2 megawatts is a lot of power. These radio waves can cause cell damage and often can be heard resonating in nearby buildings or even inside your skull. The FM music station Radio Luxembourg was one of the most powerful radio stations in Europe. A chicken farmer near its transmission mast captured the RF power by stringing wires up and so heating his hen house. The power of pop music. There was an incident with a Qantas A300 aircraft that lost control over the Howard Holt VLF station in Australia. Whether it was caused by RF interference to its navigation equipment was never established, but people suspect it was. Whales communicate over long distances and rely on the sea being pretty quiet. Imagine being underwater and hearing all this military radio traffic. It must be like being in an undersea concert hall. Studies in Hawaii have found that submarine communication systems are having a negative effect on migrating humpback whales' ability to communicate. Today, submarines use a large variety of communication systems. They still use the low frequency system, but also underwater communications docking stations where the sub can sit on the seabed to read its email. And a satellite based system called Submarine Satellite Information Exchange Subsystem, SSIXS. This is part of the High-Speed Military Satellite Communication Network.
I'm sure you all know far more about VLF radio than I do. Please tell me in a comment below and suggest other films that we can make. The truth is out there.